Hello guys and welcome to your 20th Java tutorial in which we are going to be going over another version of the for loop. Now as you guys can see I've kept the code from our last tutorial and uh, let's I want to focus down on the specific for loop here. Well you see guys in Java it's so common to have you know uh, to have a need to loop through all of the elements in an array and perform operations to each of the elements. It's, it, it is in fact so common that the people at Java have created a specific type of a for loop to make this very easy and simple for us. So first of all, let's just delete all the arguments we had here in our for loop. Now, what this kind of, you know, uh, new version of a for loop that's made specifically for arrays, uh, for looping through arrays is, the syntax for this uh, type of a for loop is first put the integer, or I mean, sorry, the type of your array, which in this case is an integer, put the name of the variable you want to reference uh, every part of the array as so uh, when we loop through our for loop each each time each element of the array is going to be referenced as I I'm sorry guys I'm, I keep making this sound I don't I, I don't I really don't know why it's kind of just it's unconscious almost uh, so sorry if that's been causing some disturbance but anyways after the colon you put uh, the name of the array you want to loop through so pretty much every time you're gonna loop through this array the value of i is gonna change first the value of i is gonna be the first element in the test scores array so it's gonna be 99 the next time the for loop uh, loops it's gonna be the next element of test scores so 97 and it's gonna keep looping it's gonna keep navigating through this array until it reaches the last element in which case the for loop terminates and in this case guys we're not adding sum plus equals test scores dot i we're not adding this but we're actually adding simply the value of i because i is set equal to the the correct value of test scores automatically so it's it's definitely simplified a lot for us and let's see if we get the same result as we did last time that the average of the test scores is 96 it's running and bam the average of the test scores is in fact 96 with this new improved version uh, so anyways guys, I think we have enough time left for me to cover some new material on how to actually loop through multi-dimensional arrays and I'll give you guys kind of a cool, cool like example on how to do that. Uh, so anyways, delete all of this previous code we have here and uh, let's start by creating a multi-dimensional array. Let's create a simple multiplication table that goes up to 3. You know, something really nice, something simple, mult table, all right, it's going to be a multiplication table, we're going to have these two square brackets here, that means it's a multi-dimensional array, so it's going to be kind of like a table, whoa, all right, well, something's weird going on, something weird's going on with my cursor, we're going to set this equal to, as you remember guys from the multi-dimensional array tutorial, we're going to set it equal to these curly braces that are encompassed by other curly braces. Uh, so in this first curly brace, what do we want to put? Well, let's see, the very first element of our array. Let, let's see, let's let's make these go by rows. This, this is a row, this is a row, this is a row of our 1, 2, 3 multiplication table. So the very first array is 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. You got, you got to kind of visualize this. So one, here's, here's our 1 off the side, and here's our 1, 2, and 3 on here. So in, in our first row, we're going to have 1, two and three then in our second row two times one is two four times three is six and in our third row we are gonna have once again three six and nine uh, so anyways let's input this for our rows two comma four comma six uh, and in the other array we're gonna put three comma six comma nine and bam that should do fine actually guys uh, so now that we've gotten that all figured out, let's delete this reference point we made here, the reference table thing, uh, and let's actually kind of you know create a loop. So how how would we how would we loop through this multiplication table and print out all the numbers effectively so they look like they're printed in a table? Well, the the answer to that question I will explain right now. How we would do that first, we would start by making a for loop and just just follow along with me here, and we would need to loop through all the values in the first first uh, pair of square brackets and in the second pair of square brackets so we need two variables we need to loop through two types of variables one that loops through all these three types of arrays or smaller 
arrays that are encompassed in the sludge array, and the other one would be to loop through each of the each of the these elements in the arrays. One, two, three, two, four, six, blah, 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 etc. So let's create a for statement with integer i uh, as of the argument set equal to zero, of course. Uh, and let's loop this array while i is less than the length of the multiplication table. Yeah, we would type multiplication table or mult table. One sec. There we go. And we would type the dot length variable, which pretty much just accesses the number of. I'm sorry, did we type? All right, yeah, pretty much just accesses the number of smaller arrays we have. So it's going to have three, three different rows here, or three different arrays. Uh, in our mult table because it acts as the length of the first square bracket pretty much. Uh, so that being said, the last argument would be i++ because we want to increase the row number by one every time. Uh, so in this for loop we are going to encompass another for loop because for every row we're going to loop through the number of rows here. For every row we want to loop through the number of elements in every row. And by the way guys, these elements, just an FYI, they can be of different lengths. They can have, you can have a ton of different elements in, in every uh, type of row here but for for our purpose it's better to have the same number of elements in every row because we're making a multiplication table uh, so the next for loop for int j let's just name it j set it equal to zero and put j is less than mult table i dot length now let, let me explain what's going on here so pretty much what it does is it takes whatever whatever row you're on so if we are say on row 1 it takes the length of that row so multiple table 1 it accesses this row and it takes the length of that row so in this case it would be 3 we can make it 4 we can make it 5 we can make it whatever we want it to be but in this case it would be 3 uh, and anyways after that we simply need to increase j by 1 because we want to loop through all of these elements going by 1 or just change the index by one meaning we access the next element to the next element to the next element and what do we want to do every time uh, this this array loops well let's just simply print it out uh, there's there's really n nothing else we, we really need to do here we're just gonna print every uh, element out in a way that it looks like a table in our printing section so how would we do that? Well, we would simply print out mult table i in the first argument and j in the next. Now notice we can use both i and j because uh, this this statement is encompassed in both in both for loops. So int i and int j we can use both of those variables because yeah, it's nested inside all these variables, which pretty much just means access the print out this element of this row. Uh, and actually, instead of printing out every element separately, I think it might actually even be better to print out every row on the line. So instead of actually ending the line with println, so it's just going to have a bunch of, you know, unconnected elements, let's just put print here, system.out.print mult table i j, so it prints out the element for each, each prints out all the element in each rows, in each row, and at the end of this, for the, for the row, let's just put system dot out dot print ln and that pretty much just ends the line for the row and then at the end of this for loop it goes back up here and it changes the row number and does the same thing for each, every row and you'll see exactly what this does once we hit this play button here uh, it'll show you exactly what's going on and bam we have uh, 123 246 and 369 kind of in the in the form of a table and we can even actually add a space after each of these uh, elements and that would just give us a spaced out kind of look looking table yeah one two three two four six three six nine notice that each of our arrays takes the place of a row each of our smaller arrays takes the place of a row and uh, once again guys let's just review this code because there was definitely a lot going on here so we created a multi-dimensional uh, array called mult table two dimensions uh, here's our first row one two three next rows two four six three six nine uh, which pretty much forms a multiplication table. Think of these as rows. That really, I think, I think that probably makes more sense, guys. Uh, and then here we nested two for loops. One for loop is i, or handles the number of rows in our table. 
uh, it's less than multiple.length. Remember, when we reference multiple.length, we think of the, the length of this, this first one, this uh, f first pair of square brackets, meaning the number of smaller arrays that we have. Uh, I plus plus at the end here. J is equal to J is less than multiple I. So multiple I accesses the, n the current row we're on, and it takes the variable I from our out outer for loop. So the, the current row we're on, and it accesses the length of that current row. So in this case, it would be 3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and it and once again increases uh, j by 1 at the end. Here, it simply prints out, notice not print ln, it prints out the, uh, the element we wanted to have on the row. And when it's finished printing out all the elements, it simply ends the line, and it moves on to the next row. That's kind of how the printing goes on here, guys. Uh, and just to show you once again that we can have more than one element on every row. We're just going to completely break our multiplication table here and have different numbers um, on every row. So once again, bam, prints everything out well, nicely. We have a table with different number of elements in every row. So anyways guys, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks very much and I will see you later. Peace.